Hi, do you work in a manufacturing facility? If you do, then this video is for you. Hi, my name is Lou and I own Electron Tech and I'm also an Electron Technician. Uh, I do a lot of repairs on different things. Uh, some of those things are AC DC drives, uh, power supplies, uh, PLCs, uh, printer circuit boards, and many different things from different industries. But if you're working in a manufacturing facility uh, and one of your responsibilities is to maintain and repair um, your equipments, chances are you'll probably run into uh, power supplies. Well, those are one of the things that we see quite often here in our shop and they do go out quite often because uh, they, they do handle uh, quite a bit of load and their job is basically to supply a lot of things. So heat does uh, cause a lot of damages to uh, power supply and also uh, when you get like an inrush current of some type, uh, they're normally the one to get you know, zap first. So power supplies are things that we see quite often and I'm sure you guys do see them also. And wanted to jump on here real quick just to give you guys a rundown on a linear power supply and hopefully it will help you guys out as far as uh, troubleshooting just in case you guys are ever down and uh, we all know how much um, production means. Um, the downtime of it and losing money so if, if you guys could you know fix a power supply quickly or determine the issue quickly and get get you guys up and running um, fairly quickly uh, that that will definitely help you guys out as far as saving money on downtime so let's look, look at a power supply okay here is a linear power supply uh, this is actually one of my boards that i use to do training but here's a linear power supply board and i'll just kind of briefly go over some of the major components on here and basically how they work and what to look for if you guys ever have an issue so here on this side over here is your input all right you'll go through this input input and then it'll go through here's a, a switch and then one one leg will go through this fuse that's for your protection and then you have this transformer which you you'll have a primary side which in this case this transformer the primary side is on here and then this will be your secondary side so basically what it's doing is taking 120 going in and then it's going to be on your primary side and this transformer is basically going to step it down to a workable voltage uh, in this case this one i think is probably uh, taking it down to I think 18 volts AC and then over here you have your bridge rectifier which is made up of uh, four diodes and then here right, this four diodes what, what it basically does is it rectifies right or changes your AC coming from this transformer into DC so once it has your DC voltage these two capacitors here are your uh, filtered capacitors and then from your filter capacitors, they'll go into uh, these right here, which are voltage regulators. And then on the output, they'll, they'll have capacitors. But basically these voltage regulators are the ones that are regulating your voltages. So if you need a five volt, it'll regulate it at a five volt. If you need 12 volt or 24 or whatever voltage um, you need or the design calls for, uh, that's basically what these uh, regulators do they maintain or regulate a steady output voltage and then over here uh, is where your your output voltage is at and so uh, on this side over here right, this is uh, my variable output uh, voltage it's zero to about 14 volts uh, it's the same thing right I'll, I'll take the uh, DC voltage it goes into my uh, regulator uh, here's a few circuits over here that would kind of set up this is a 
pretty much a you know, LM 317, which is a adjustable voltage regular, just meaning that the output, you know, I could vary the output. And, and then uh, these resistors here are just to limit my current. As you can see here is my low and my high. Uh, if I want to work on something, I don't want to damage anything, I'll set my milliamps to low. If I need something with a little bit more high, higher amperage, I'll set it higher. And of course, this is my output. So if I want to power something up and vary it, I could come in here and I could vary my output with this pot. So, so variable output and these two are fixed. And then again, out here is my uh, positive and negative 12 volts. So AC goes in, goes through this switch, go, goes through this fuse, and goes through to my primary side, steps it down to the secondary, and then my secondary voltages go through my bridge rectifier, turning my AC to DC, gets filtered, and then go, goes through my regulators and then on out. And that's how you get a stable output voltage. So basically that's how a linear power supply works. And if you guys ever have an issue, first thing you do is you guys would definitely want to check the fuse. Right, so it, if the fuse is open, then more likely uh, something else has pulled too much current to um, you know, blow this fuse whether something that's coming in from here that uh, exceeds the rating of the fuse or something on this side over here has shorted and then pretty much has uh, shorted your positive to negative which is which causes a high amperage and then this fuse opens up so let's put power to this so as, as we, put, we put power to it we know that there's you know, with, with these leds indicators I know that my voltages are present. So basically, some of the things you could do if, when voltage, when the, the voltage is applied to it, uh, you can uh, kind of step through it. So I, I will measure my input, make sure I get my input, and then I would uh, measure to see if my input actually makes it to my primary side. And if I know my, my transformer, I'll, I could either pull up the data sheet and look at my secondary side of my transformer and I'll see uh, if my voltages are present there. If they are, then I'm moving on to, to my bridge rectifier, which is over here. And then I'll measure across these two and make sure that whatever is on my secondary side gets to my primary, I'm sorry, my input of my bridge rectifier. If it's there, then I, I would check to see if I'm getting my DC voltages. And in this case right here, um, I'm getting a positive on this side and I'm getting a negative on, on this side because this, is you can see is separated from here. This side is my negative 12 volts and this part right here is, is my positive 12 volts. So if I'm getting my, my voltage here, I'll check to see if I'm getting my DC voltage to the input of my regulator, which is here and then the output to over here, right? Which is 12 volt and then obviously it will get out here. So that's kind of the way that I would go through just to uh, work my way from the input all the way to the output. So let me flip this around. Let me turn this off first, make sure safety is first, right? Turn this off and let's put a fault in this. So just hold on a second. All right, so I've done putting in a fault on this board and if I turn it back on, you notice that the LED is now coming on. A while ago, if you guys remember, the LED over here was on and now it's not, right? So if my LED is not coming on, which is a common problem when we see power supplies uh, come in for repair, Right, LED is not coming on means that one of the output is missing. So in this case right here, we see the negative side, negative 12 volt is on and no LED here. So 12 volt is probably missing. And that means that I have to troubleshoot the uh, positive side. So I will go through the same thing again. I will go through, uh, I know that my input is there because if it's not there, then 
my negative 12 volt LED wouldn't be on. So I know that AC is going in, fuse is good, primary side of the transformer is good, secondary side is good. On my bridge rectifier, I definitely know that, okay, my negative side is good. So now I would have to do is troubleshoot from my my positive 12 volt and then I would definitely check my bridge on here. I would check uh, capacitors, right? Maybe this capacitor is um, shorted or these little small caps here, which is uh, notorious for it. Or check my voltage regulator. Uh, here's another filter caps. And then, and then I would also uh, check the LED and see if the LED is uh, dead or not. And, and of course I would have measured my output already, but LEDs, we have seen repairs where LED is just dead and, and um, nobody checked the output voltage. So that's kind of my thought process of going through and checking it from the beginning to the end, knowing which circuit is which. And I would go through that and find out what the issue is. And I'm not going to take the time to go through and actually troubleshoot this uh, because I've, I'm the one that put the fault in. But definitely the, the fault is that I've opened up um, one of the jumpers in the back and no voltage is going out to the connector and therefore uh, no voltage ever reaches the LED. So that's the issue we have now. So if I was going through and troubleshooting that, I would definitely have would have found it if I would have stepped through going through the, the beginning all the way through to where wherever the voltage uh, stops. So if you, if you guys are in a plant and you guys are troubleshooting uh, any kind of power supply, uh, that's kind of the way that you would uh, go through and troubleshoot it. As long as you know the circuit, then you could troubleshoot it and you could more likely find the issue, replace the part and power back up and be back in business. So hopefully this was a help and hopefully you, you guys will be able to you know, repair or get you guys up if you guys are ever down. Um, the, the biggest thing is just make sure that you guys know what you guys are doing and make sure you guys uh, stay safe. So again, this is Lou and appreciate you guys watching this video. Thanks. Bye.